AM 1060 WMEL. This is John Harper on the new 1060 WMEL. You know, each person on the air and behind the scenes here at WMEL has a commitment to be the best. We'll put our talk radio product up against anyone. Quality, hard work, and commitment. That's what AM 1060 WMEL and on the World Wide Web at 1060WMEL.com is all about. We have only one mission at WMEL, to be the best. After all, what else is there? The views expressed on the following program are those of the hosts, callers, and guests, and are not necessarily those of WMEL staff, management, or advertisers. This is Joe Secco, folks, your host for Helping Seniors, the radio arm of Helping Seniors of Burrard County. And we, our purpose is to educate, inform, and connect seniors to resources. Our phone number for Kay Kaiser, our information specialist at the office is 473-7770. And the phone number here at WML is 241-1060. Note the change. It's now AM 1060, not AM 1300 anymore. So you got to forget 1300 and think about 1060. And that's what you tell people where to listen. It's a much stronger signal. The area of coverage is just about quadrupled, folks. So the people that sponsor programs on WML and people that help sponsor us have their signal and their presence made known from as far south as West Palm Beach, all the way up north to Jacksonville, and over on the other side of Orlando. And that's a tremendous area of coverage, and it tremendously broadens what we can do. And... That's one of the subjects that Kay and I are going to talk about today, today, and that's awareness and why it's so important for people to know about it. But think for a minute, folks, about uh, our sponsors and some of the proposals that Kay and I are going to talk to you about on the air today, which are extremely important to seniors. Sponsors for this show include Gentiva Home Healthcare, the Eye Institute, Celebite Dental Implant with Dr. Lee Sheldon, Bill Johnson, elder law attorney, this radio station, Wustoff Hospital Systems, Levin Home Care, Ren Care, which is a medical alert program. See, Ren Care sort of doesn't tell you what it really is. Right. But if I tell you it's a medical alert program, it's got some fantastic things that they can do to help you and those that you love that, to be cared for in their homes. You need to ask some questions of Kay at the office at 473-7770. Right. And Atlantic Shores Rehabilitation. We got a bunch of other sponsors. We'll mention them on the second half of the show. But let's get to uh, what Kane and I want to talk to you about today. And I've simply titled this show "Why Support a Nonprofit." And those of you that uh, take Florida today, you, there was an article about uh, two weeks in there ago in there about uh, the th- several thousand nonprofit organizations that exist. In Brevard County, Florida, most of them we never know about. Uh, some of the bigger nonprofits that do a lot of work we don't know about, and I have my own reasons why they don't publicize their work. Uh, and one of them is the fact that if they publicize what they're doing, too many people are going to want their services, so the money they have available through the grant process is simply not going to last, and they're going to have to. Uh, we used to say pull in your stomach and uh, make something good happen. Right. And, uh, Kay, you're, you're, you're smiling about that. Why are you smiling? <laughs> well, I mean, it's there are so many different nonprofits out there. But, Joe, what makes Helping Seniors of Brevard so unique and so different is, case in point, what we're doing here on the radio today. We outreach besides in reach and take calls, but we're promoting through all our media efforts, whether it be radio, television shows, our printed newsletter, eight pages in Senior Scene Magazine, articles in Hometown News, Ebony News Today, Spotlight Magazine, and next coming is Aldea Today, which will tap into the Hispanic market as well. But everything is archived and put on our website so that you can even search If you're looking for a specific subject to learn more about, you'll find it, either in a print, TV, or radio format. So that that education is so powerful because so many people that I talk to, 99.9%, they call because they cannot navigate the elder system, period. That makes a big difference. So, you know, 
the reason we're talking about this, folks, today is because I, I think it's time, and I've been doing this for 26 years here in Brevard County, it's time for the people that listen to the radio shows, watch the TV shows, read the articles in the newspapers, realize that nonprofits have to raise money in order to pay the bill. You know, for years I've I've gone through the grant process and I've appealed to the United Way and have not simply not been able to break into that funding because they not don't take on new people. That's not right. That's right. You you go to the county for funding and uh, somebody sent me an email this morning and said, well, Joe, what guidance do these uh, county-based organization funding uh, uh, people that make the funding bill where do they get their guidance? That's a good question. Yes, it is a it's good a question. a very good question. Where does the guidance come from? Because when I talk to the commissioners and some of the staff, they don't have any idea. Right. So that's one of the reasons we have a Commission on Aging. The Commission on Aging is totally ineffective because it does not have a plan for what it's going to do. And that's sad because the people that are listening to this radio program may or may not know the amount, a percentage of seniors in Brevard County. And aren't we one, what is the, we are the, what is it, I want to say 24th? Well, no, no, we're the, uh, actually we're the. Uh, in the country. Uh, you know, I forget, it's the uh, 7th or the 24th. I right now, you, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm, we are either the 7th or the 24th oldest county in the United States in terms of 3,067 counties in terms of the number right. of people over the age of 65. Right. You know, whether it's 7th or 24th, my gosh, that's... That's huge. Huge, Kay. It's yeah. huge. And if we go by AARP standards, 50 plus, in Brevard County, that equates to almost one in every two people. Yeah. Well, that's the statistics huge. on that... Is, uh, and the, the, that have come out and they're, they're, they're presented by the board county itself. Uh, roughly 254,000 out of the 454,000 people in the county um, are over the age of uh, 50, 55. Mm-hmm. Over 55, the age of 55. That's right. 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 And uh, 22.1%, 22.1% are over the age of 65. And, you know, this this is a difficult subject to talk about, Kay, because yeah. I happen to also have been appointed by the governor to sit on the Children's Services Council. And, you know, I get I see it from two sides, the children's side and the senior side. Yet I'm a senior and I I'm well aware of the fact that most of our listeners and readers are not even aware of the significance of these statistics because there's just no place they're publicized. Right. That's why we do this radio show, and that's why we do uh, all the, all the uh, stuff in the newspaper and on television so that people know about not just what we do, right. but they know about what uh, the daycares like Sarah Care, right. uh, Riverview, the Alzheimer's Foundation, they mm-hmm. all have daycares. Sure. Uh, none of them are specific to any type of thing. They all take care of the elderly, regardless of what they say right. they take care of. Uh, and I, I know p- because I've done it. Right. And I want to put a shout out to our to our sponsors because everyone that participates with you on the radio or TV or an article in our newsletter, they are – the experts in their field. And I know that when I get a caller who's looking for legal assistance, when I give them Bill Johnson, I know Bill Johnson's going to take care of them. Um, so these people are specialized in what we're really, and we feel confident in referring our particular resources because those are people that are not going to take advantage of the seniors. And people that, you know, they don't, gone are the days of picking up your telephone book and going through the yellow pages to try to find a resource. It's, it's just yeah. kind of. We're, we're going to, we'll pick about, we're going to talk about three new networks folks, that we're uh, helping seniors is trying to put in place. We'll talk about that on the second part of the show. And I think you'll want to listen because it's going to become very important to you. But right now we have a, I have a caller. Uh, Sandy, you're on. You there? Hello. Hi, Sandy. I'm here. Uh, yeah, I was uh, listening earlier to your topic about, you know, the nonprofits and stuff and seniors not getting access to them. You know, you call and you call, and you either don't get calls back or you've got to be persistent. Mm-hmm. 
and it's just very, very frustrating trying to negotiate the system to get services, and I have a lot of others. I'm a senior citizen. I have a lot of senior citizen friends. They just give up. Yeah, and you're one who hasn't given up. I know that you told me that uh, we go back to almost a year in, in talking with you, Sandy, is the fact that you were trying to make plans for getting various things in um, in motion because you were going to have a foot surgery, and, and it was very frustrating. You were repeating your story time and time and again to several different individuals. Isn't that correct? Um, I won't mention the name of the right. the nonprofit, but right. I will say this, that on well, I've been last six months, I knew it was getting down to I had to have it done. Mm-hmm. And I had given my personal information not once, but at least a dozen times and figured I would be on a list, you know, that they had to be putting my information in a computer, you know, start a electronic file, if anything, about my name. Mm -hmm. And more than just my name and phone number, we'll come to find out it hadn't been. And I had received a couple of calls thinking they knew what, you know they were uh, they were calling about, and I called and said, "Can you clarify?" Mm-hmm. And it was with the same agency, but a different, a totally different situation. Mm. And it was very frustrating when the person said to me, "She's very nice," but she said, "All I have is your name and number, and you came up off the waiting list." Mm. And so I didn't even know what she was referring to, you know, because I'd asked for several different services. Mm-hmm because I'm alone, and I was going to have this surgery done, and I would be literally a Mm shut-in for somebody that's an active senior driving themselves, you know, doing everyday things that most people take advantage of and and can do and take for granted. I think think the bottom line is, Sandy, that you didn't give up. You know, and a lot of people get frustrated when they try to get, and I know even, Joe, when you've called different, even in Tallahassee and being put on hold, for up teen minutes to even just to try to get a straight answer. But that's the that's the interesting thing that I think that a lot of people listening to this program today, that there are good resources out there. But um, unfortunately, you know, unlike what we do, I always return calls. I don't care. Um, I, if I don't get to you, you know, if you leave a voice message and I'm on the other line, I'll get to you. And I return calls in the evening and weekends, too. But the bottom line is is that a lot of times it's frustrating just to try to get a straight answer, too. And I understand. But you didn't give up. You are fighting. You were fighting your battle, right? Yep. I'm okay. persistent. Yep. <laughs> right. Well, Sandy, be persistent. And uh, uh, any way that helping seniors can help you accomplish what you need to accomplish, you know you can call Kay and she will help you. You know that. Well, I've referred a lot of even dealing with some different people that come in for home health care and stuff that are helping me. They have voiced the same frustrations that they have these clients, and they thought certain agencies would be able to help them because they are seniors. They're not. They're 60-plus. We're not talking AARP 50-plus. We're talking 60-plus. And they have voiced their frustrations. Well, did you call so-and-so, and why didn't so-and-so do this, X, Y, Z? And I said, they had said, I don't meet the criteria. And they've been honest with me on a personal level to say, well, they're running into this a lot with other clients that they have. And wait, wait a minute, Sandy. Are, are you saying that, Agencies that are helping you with your post op stuff are saying that they have clients that they're trying to service that have had s- problems similar to what you're having with some of the same yes, organizations. Sir. And and I can't mention the names. No, I, I don't want you to. I don't want you. To. But what but, it, what it does, Sandy, is that I, I would personally like for you off the air to share some of this with Kay. So okay. that so that we can get this in writing, mm-hmm. and we can go to the appropriate organizations that need to know about this. And th- this is this is why it's so important, folks, for 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 all of us to be aware of what Sandy's talking about. If if people like Sandy don't come forward 
and say they don't like something or they're not getting what they think they should, then the people that uh, control the power, and I've got an article we're going to cover on the second part of the show about what seniors can do, Mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about that more on the second part of the show, not now. But, Sandy, you have a lot of information that uh, Kay needs to get. We need to document it. We needed to get it to our commissioners because here in Rourke County, uh, the county gives over a half a million dollars to county-based organizations that serve people. And I was present uh, this week when uh, that process was carried out. And uh, I watched uh, $60,000 being given to an organization that doesn't even have an official office in Broward County. Uh, It goes to Orlando. So there are questions that need to be asked Mm -hmm. and need to be answered, not to cause a hullabaloo, but to get the truth out and to do a better job of being more cost-effective and service-effective in what we do with the dollars that are allocated by the federal government, by the uh, state, and by local organizations. Right. And while I'm not a Trump fan, he has pointed that out uh, yeah, that's several true. times. You know, he, the guy's a businessman. That's right. And he's made some strong points about what our government needs to do. We don't like to hear that because one of the first things that uh, that the average citizen thinks is that, oh, my God, they're going to take my entitlement program away from me. Right. That's not what they're trying to do. We're right. trying to make it possible for what you want to call entitlement programs, Medicaid, Medicare, right. Social Security. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure that those things last. Absolutely. And we have a lot of people taking advantage of them. You're right. We yeah. had a doctor exactly. here in, in, in Melbourne that... Uh, Built to people for roughly twenty million dollars. He got caught. Yeah, uh, that's one right. of our one of our major uh, medical organizations did the same thing. They got caught. Exactly. Yeah, so, it, and but you know, in 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 thinking about it, those kind of things are a drop in a bucket. But when you start putting the drops together, make a pretty good sized puddle. You bet. And I think Sandy, if you're still on the line. Yes, I am. Okay, didn't you tell me also you you, you were having some um, issues regarding being billed on your copay? And you kind of uncovered a, a little bit more on that aspect, too, as I recall, right? Yes, I did. I, I This is what I'd like to get out to other people. If, if you have medical insurance, I pay for my insurance. Mm-hmm. But if you do have medical insurance, I don't care, you know, what brand or anything. I'm not here to promote a Pacific insurance company. Mm-hmm. But find out what's your policy. And if you have to ask for a supervisor, if you have to ask for somebody, not just somebody who answers the phone bank, right. but find out what your policy will cover. And if it may or may not, you may have to get that letter from a doctor to cover uh, ABC, right. you know, medical equipment or something above, you know, that needs second approval. Mm-hmm. But if you can get second approval that your insurance will cover it under certain conditions to be met, that will save it from coming out of your pocket. Right. Well, you're a smart lady here. I know that you're not only persistent in trying to fight your own battle and having gone through a lot what you've gone through, but the fact is that you're you're paying attention to dotting the I's and crossing the T's there, Miss Sandy. Well, and dotting the I's and crossing the T's, to what I've listened to on this very short segment of our radio show, how about Sandy, you getting with Kay and putting the essence of what you've talked about and what you've experienced in a short column that we can publish in our next issue of the newsletter, uh, okay. Helping Seniors, that goes in Senior Scene Magazine, because this is the type idea. of information that the average listener needs to understand. Yep. Here's another good example. Last week, I spoke at the uh, uh, at a meeting of the Harris Retired Employees. There were roughly 100 people in attendance, and I talked about VA aid and attendance as part of my talk. After the show, after the uh, lunch was over, um, the president of the organization came up and asked if uh, a couple of ladies in the audience uh, requested a, a several more of my cards. And I said, certainly, why? He said, well, they qualify for aid and attendance because both their husbands were in World War II, and they're trying to live on less than $700 a month now, mm. and they simply did not know about aid and attendance. So... This goes back to I got a phone I got a uh, a letter in the mail uh, last week from a gentleman who read my column in Hometown News, and he said, you know, Joe, he said, that, you know, VA in attendance is uh, available for everybody, and 
what this gentleman thought was that the VA went out and made sure people knew about it. No, they mm-hmm. don't. They don't. You have to know about this. That's right. And this is one of the reasons that I get so frustrated when I go to these meetings and apply for funding because everybody takes for granted that we're just doing a radio show, we're just doing a TV show, mm-hmm. or we're, we're, we've got columns in this. They don't realize the importance of what's in those radio shows, the TV shows, right. and the newspaper columns. What's in there is information that people that are seniors and care for seniors need to know. They need to know that there are such things as VAA and attendance available. They need to know that there are dentists in this Credit card or whatever. I don't don't actually remember because I was going. They need to know that there are. uh, So. They need to know that there are. Dentists in the area that will do dentures for a very minimal price because they realize that some people can't be helped. But, Sandy, I want to thank you for being on. Yes, and Sandy. Uh, please call Kay, okay? Okay, I'll do that. And you guys have a good weekend. Thank, thank you, Connie. Same to you, and I hope you're feeling better. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, we're just about at the half, at the half uh, period show. What else... Uh, what else would you want to make a comment about? Well, I wanted to comment because the aid in attendance, and this is what really separates us, too. I'm not just giving a number out from a caller here immediately. Al, like we get to we'll, say we're going to, take, okay. we're going to take our mid-show break, folks, and I'll get Kay to bring this up about uh, the VA aid in attendance when we come back, and we'll talk about the networks we're going to do. Stay with us. Yep. AM 1060 WMEL. This is Joe Secker, folks. We're back live for the second half of our Helping Seniors show for this Thursday uh, and the second part of the show will continue what Kay and I were talking about. But before that, I want to mention the phone number again for Kay at the office is 473-77770. And the sponsors for the second part of the show include Senior Scene Magazines, Hometown News, Spotlight Magazine, Seniors Helping Seniors, a home health care organization, the Fountains of Melbourne, Beth Courtney of the Braswell team, financial advisors, Canadian Meds of Melbourne, Wiederman Malik, Vitas Hospice, and Peaceful Beach Mediation. That's uh, run by attorney uh, Brooke Goldfarb, and she's a Harvard graduate. And uh, here she is, folks, a very lovely lady that tries to help seniors that think they need to end their marriage. And uh, mm-hmm. she tries to keep them from doing that for a lot of reasons. But it's important and that's why Kay and I believe it's so important for you all to uh, understand why we do this show. We do it so mm-hmm. that people know more about what is available in Broward County to help people. They need to know how to access those resources. But we're also finding out that we need to do a better job of putting access to these resources available. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Before that, I want Kate to finish about VA aid and attendance. And then she's got a testimonial. We got permission to uh, play on the air because I think it shows, if you listen to the what Kay is going to broadcast here in just a minute, you'll see why it's so important. Go ahead, Kay. Okay. Well, what I wanted to bring to the audience's attention is the fact that if you call Helping Seniors of Rivard, you, typically, you may have one issue that you're looking for a resource for. But I find nine times out of ten, after speaking with an individual, they have several issues. And I will, quite frankly, if I'm talking to a woman that's got an, a very limited income, and I understand that she was married, her husband passed away, and I'll ask her, I said, wait a minute, did your, did your husband serve in, in service? At least 90 days he was in and one day of time of war. She says, well, yes, he did. I said, are you getting aid and attendance benefits? She says, most times they say, what's that? So I said, okay. Now, you said you're living on $700 a month and you don't have made, you don't have assets over 80000 Do you? And she, you know, most of them laugh. They say, you got to be kidding at $700 a month. But the fact is that, you know, I said, I want you to, here's, here's a number I want you to call. I want you to ask a fellow by the name of Dennis, and let's get you going through this system here expeditiously so that you can create some additional income and take that burden off your shoulders. So it's simple as this. People don't know about it. Right. They don't know, but education is power. 
Knowledge is power. So that's why we do what we do, Joe, in the fact of trying to reach out and get the information out to the people through our various media. So you talk for a minute, and I'm going to load this little testimonial up here. Okay. Well, Kay's going to, while she's going to load it up, folks, I think I, the reason I, I, I would like for you to listen to what Kay is going to put on the air is it shows uh, it shows some emotion and it shows uh, – some appreciation of somebody as a result of the way Kay talked to him. You ready to go? Yep. Here we go. Hi, this is Audrey Grandevic, and I talked to Kay earlier today, and she told me to let her know the outcome. Uh, so there's no need for anybody to return my call. But Kay, thank you over and over and over again, because I found out so much valuable information since talking to you that... It, it's so beneficial and so helpful to me and going to be cost saving. Thank you so much. I do appreciate your time and your help. Bye now. That was that was a real testimonial, folks. That right. uh, that wasn't uh, wasn't asked for by us or anything at all. Okay. Correct. This lady left this message on our voicemail, and it does get recorded so that we make sure that we return all of our calls. But it goes, just goes to show that I ask my callers, I say, do me a favor. After you make these contacts with the resources that I've given you, would you please call me back and let me know the results? And nine times out of ten, they do. And if they don't, I'm going to call them. But that was actually a recording that I got permission to play on the air today from a woman who was very grateful she got done in just a few hours after talking with me and getting the right resources done, and it just changed her life dramatically. Well, key things make so much difference. Uh, uh, Jill Dunham, who is the director at the Space Coast Center for Independent Living, they have a wonderful, wonderful transportation program over there, folks. And uh, she had applied for money from the county for community-based operate organizations, and she's sitting next to me while, while everybody made their pitch or got, answered the questions. And uh, Jill had never gotten any, Space Coast Center had never, for uh, independent living, had never gotten any money from the county for this kind of, for their transportation program. Somebody asked a question, and Jill said, well, we take veterans from their home to the VA and back to their home any place in the county for ten dollars, I would be willing to make a large wager mm -hmm. that the reason that she got funding of fifty-seven thousand dollars for the county for her program was because of the comments she made about taking veterans for help for a cost of ten dollars. But she also followed that up and said, "If they can't afford the ten dollars, we don't charge them anything." So, you, you know, this is what people need to know about, okay? And that's Absolutely. why we do what we do. That's right. And I started the show out by saying the name of the show was Why Support a Nonprofit? So many people think that nonprofits just uh, magically get their money out of thin air. That's not true at all, folks. Um, I'm also aware of the fact that as I approach my 82nd birthday that uh, there is such a thing as age discrimination. It makes me mad. It makes me mad in heck because I've had people actually say to me, well, Joe, what hap happens to you? Who's going to take over helping seniors? What's going to happen to that program? You do great work, but you're too old. I said, I'm still here. We're putting something in place that will exist beyond and past me. And one of the ways to do that is not to depend on phone funding that you can't depend on. Too many nonprofits do that. They don't build a solid funding base. And that's why we started our media sponsor program. We also started what we call an assistance network. And next week, we start to market this thing, folks. Mm -hmm. For roughly a fee of $750 a year, we will put together a network of electricians, plumbers, yard people, Mechanics. painters, roofers, people that do the physical guts hard labor around a home and if you call our organization for that kind of help you'll get a name of somebody that signed an ethics statement right and we hope that we'll agree to give seniors a discount now that's that's part of it and then i got to thinking on the way out to the radio show today that years ago when i was a director over at the alzheimer's foundation we put together 
a, pro, a thing that we gave out to everybody called. We listed the, the really good nursing homes, the good assisted living facilities, mm -hmm. the doctors that, that cared for seniors, that uh, were geriatric doctors. That's all gone by the wayboard. But we're going to resurrect that. Yay. And hopefully within the next two to three months, we will put together a network such that if you have children that live in New York and they want to call and ask about what is a good nursing home, what is a good assisted living facility, what doctor will treat seniors. And I get that now. I, I know get you get it. Requests. I know you get it. And I know a lot of people have been calling about, you know, with the, the rain and everything, good roofer, you know, so they're... We're looking, and we know that this is so badly needed. There's nothing really put together like that to help our seniors. It does not exist, That's folks. right. And I know, you know, uh, we're going to make it happen. You bet. But at the same time, I know I'm not Rockefeller, and I'm not Trump. <laughs> but I can afford to give something to nonprofits, and I do that. But there are more people that listen to this radio show, that watch the TV shows, that read the columns in the newspaper, could easily afford a $100 donation a year. $100 a year. Imagine how that could be compounding but to us. if I had 1,000 people yeah. out of 545,000 that gave $100 a year, right. that's $100,000. And with all we're doing, we would have more than enough to fund our operation and you Always, and you've heard me say this over the air, folks. You've heard me see it on TV, and you've seen it in my printed columns. All the money in excess of operational costs will go into an endowment right. to help seniors. And that is the one thing that this county does not have. And those of you that are listening to the show, think about some of you who have probably called me to ask me if for help, how to help somebody else. I had two calls like that at my house this morning. Not one, one call. One call. But it happens all the time. People call me because I've been involved in the system. People call Kay. And folks, mm -hmm. there's something else that you need to know. Those phone calls you make to us on the weekend are logged on a computer. Yes. Kay checks the computer. I check it, too. And sometimes I will say, I'll send an email to Kay and say, did you answer this? And I have never had her say i did not she always does so even our, when i'm sick <laughs> yeah, i know that I know, of course but it's well, what it's is important <laughs> Kay, is that people get a better understanding that we're trying to put something in place in broward county against a lot of odds right without a lot of cooperation from organizations that could help us if they wanted to exactly and yet at the same time we go outside the county to get money to help people in Brevard County when we have 545,000 people live here and we have a large number of people that do donate. But along that line, if we do with the, what I'm talking about with these networks, we have a major fundraiser, mm -hmm. then we will have the wherewithal to help people. Yes. And folks, many of you have been to the auction I used to do at the Alzheimer's Foundation. We used to raise sometimes forty and $50,000 through the art show. We are doing to, going to do the same thing on an expanded basis at the Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church on 17 October, starting at 6 p.m. We're ch we're asking for a donation of $25 for a ticket. That gets you in the door, but that money goes to help us pay operational costs, not for the not just to, to waste that money. It's used to, to help people, but. For that auction, we're going to have art. Right now, we have a promise. Uh, in hand, I have 36 handmade rugs from Russia, Pakistan, All over. Afghanistan, Iran, China, and China. We also have They're arrowheads. beautiful, by the way. Huh? They're absolutely gorgeous. They're gorgeous. But it'll be a, for a good price. One of them, we're getting them all appraised by Fall Siri Rugs of Vero Beach. We have uh, three sets of Indian arrowhead jewelry that date back to 8,000 B.C. Now, you're going to say, how in the hell does Joe know that? <laughs> well, Joe knows that because his brother dug them up from roughly 
two feet under the air, out of the topsoil in Kentucky, and it's been proven that these arrowheads date back to what's called the Palmer period, which was 8,000 B.C. Wow. These arrowheads are perfect. They've been turned into jewelry, a set of earrings, and a pendant by uh, Guy Skelton, who is a uh, gold wire jeweler. Yep, wrapped and in he gold. And did it all free, yeah. and they're going to be auctioned off. Uh, I've got two posters i got to find right now. They've been hand-signed by the coach of the Patriots and by Joe Bellino, who was a Heisman Trophy winner at Navy and played for the Patriots. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're told they've been signed by Brady and some of the other Patriot players. Uh, we got a, those things. We got a, uh, a file photo of the Great White Fleet. It was taken in 1908 that President Roosevelt sent around the world in 1907 and 1908. Uh, we got some fantastic things. Beautiful uh, got, artwork. Yeah, artwork. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so, something for everyone. It is something for everyone, and it's it's a way that you can help contribute to putting a program in place that will be here to help people. Uh, I, I got kind of frustrated because we didn't get Cali Fuddy. We didn't get water Fuddy first. I just want you to know that. But I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up because there are a lot of things that need to be asked of our county commissioners about how some of these decisions are made. And if we're afraid to make the decisions, then there was an article... A lot of people, you guys, you send me articles, folks. And one guy sent me an article, and he said, let's see, I still got the thing on it. It said here, uh, Joe, for your information, and he signed it, John. Seniors can make a difference in the world. And the big quote was the thing. He said, a life of com constant complaining is like a steady diet of, of persimmons. <laughs> it puckers your personality and wrinkles your soul. <laughs> What he is saying is stop complaining and do something. Uh, don't just say the government's spending too much money on stuff. Right. Take a little bit of what you have and send it to us. Or call KTL and we'll give you our address. You can send us a check. We'll put it in the bank and help. You'll help us help some other people. And you might just feel good about participating. Uh, I want to make a comment on Go that ahead, endowment fund because I'm not sure that maybe listening on it knows exactly what you mean by that. Most of my callers are on a very limited income. I have another fellow who's looking to get upper and lower dentures on a very, well, 700 and some dollars a month. But he's been trying to save every penny to get, you know, these new dentures and so forth. But imagine if we had that endowment fund in place that could be maybe contributing a little bit towards helping this gentleman pay for those dentures. So these are things that, you know, I, you know, you talk about the warm and fuzzy and feeling good. If you help helping seniors of Brevard with a small donation, whatever you can afford, imagine how that's going to help others who can't help themselves. Yeah. And the other thing, Kay, is that when organizations that will help fund nonprofit organizations, when they see the local community participate, right. that gives them a much warmer, fuzzy feeling yes. about giving some of their money to help. Right. We've got an organization that's uh, out of New York that uh, helped us with a $75,000 grant uh, year before last, and uh, we believe they'll do the same thing again this year. But you know those kind of things are like icing on a cake, and yes. if we have, if we have operational funding in place through our media sponsors, our provider network, our own fundraiser, mm -hmm. and an annual fund drive, and local donations, right? All these grants that we get can be placed into the endowment to help people, exactly. and that's why it's important. And folks, I challenge you, I challenge you, to go to the internet. Call out a nonprofit and find out how many have an endowment and do what I'm talking about. I challenge you to do that. I already know the answer. So, But if you find the answer on yourself, you might feel pretty good about helping somebody uh, do something else. But let's get back to what we were talking about, the importance of nonprofit organizations and, and what we can do. Uh, I think, Kay, that uh, in the short time we have left, I'd like for you to expand on a theory about uh, – what media outreach can do and why it's so important for uh, our listeners not only to know about our radio, TV, and newspaper columns, but it's important that they help us spread the word right. that these things are available. 
Right. Well, I, I get a lot of calls even today, you know, recently, the people who are talking about helping seniors, they say, I ask, well, one of the questions I ask the caller is, how did you find out about us? And it, it is through our media outreach. But now what's coming back is a friend told me, or you help someone, and I need some help now, too. So the, the idea is that, you know, it's it's really going full circle. It's not a matter of just saying, okay, but people are talking about us. That's the bottom line. People are aware of helping seniors of Brevard. I'm getting referrals from agencies that I didn't even think knew about us at this point, too. Well, I, I, you know, I'm not going to mention names, but I, 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 want, I want you as listeners to understand exactly what I'm saying right now. Many of you need to put trusts and estate plans in place. Right. I know for a fact, I know for a fact that there are attorneys in Burrard County that will charge eight to $10,000 to do that. Because people have called me and said, this is what I was quoting, Joe. You know somebody will do it at a better price? Mm-hmm. And I said, yes, I do. And I give them a couple of names. Mm-hmm. And invariably, the people will call back and say, how can there be that much of a difference? Where one might charge 10, another person that truly knows what they're doing and does this as a minor priority of business does it for 30000 or $3,500. Right. I have sat in the attorney's office and listened to him talk to a family, ask the questions, and then quote the prices. Wow. So, you know, there's just... That's why it's so important for us to put this uh, medical network in place, the provider yeah. network in place, and our media sponsors. And that's why you right. need to look at our website, yes. Helping Seniors of org. Go on there and look at the rug gallery that we're going to have for sale over at that auction. Take a look at the TV shows we have archived. Look at the comments and the articles we have from the newspaper. Listen to these radio shows. This one right. will be archived by tomorrow night right. on the website. Mm -hmm. It's not just us, folks. You can call your family in New Jersey, California, and say, go to, go to the website, and you can listen to the radio show that is done on WML AM 1060. You can get that through the 1060 website, or you can get it through our archive site. Absolutely. It's important people start to know about this stuff. And I'm tired of not or being afraid to challenge authority the right way. I'm right. not saying to complain. About, I'm saying do something. Right. And if I'm afraid to do it, then how am I going to ask somebody else to write a letter? And folks, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't like What's happening, if you seniors don't like something, go to these commission meetings. You bet. We're going to start calling. We have an advocacy group. And by the way, our advocacy plan has been submitted to the county commissioners. Yes. So far. Only one has commented about the advocacy plan. So, persistence, not complaining, yep. persistence the right way. I don't intend to become a persimmon. There you go. I'm not going to be a persimmon, and I know Kay is not afraid, and he's going to be a persimmon. You bet. We're going to be advocates, and that's what we need you to be, too. Call 473-7770 if you need any help on your resources. We're here to help you. All right. Thank you for listening to us today. Maybe a little outspoken today, but, <laughs> folks, it's time that we speak out for ourselves. Seniors need to fight for what we need. Talk to you later. See you next week. Bye-bye. I second that emotion. Okay, bye. <laughs>